Starting off another mission with the group. Um, it's somewhat in inverse of the, the last one we did. Um, instead of us coming in and attacking some ship on a planet, we're actually around a planet and another ship, which is very similar to our old ship, is going to be warping in. Now I just want to say, um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to go into this match, but I'm using these Tentac or Zaluxian, I think they're called. Uh, guys, they're supposed to be human. But I'm just using that, and if I'm reading it right, they only get two guys because they also have this this diplomat here, and that's our job is to try and kidnap or kill that diplomat. We get a better, um, we get a special bonus if we if we kidnap it. Um, so we have Melky with us now. A big change I made. I decided that Cowboy. I, I realized that rules for being a robot. So Cowboy is a robot. I asked him, and he was like, "Sure, sure." And it actually kind of suits him well as a pilot to be a robot. So he's now called Cowbot. And I we've reconfigured the the whole ship. We have a cargo bay here. This cargo bay has a battery in it, a hull stabilizer, and a tractor beam. Now the tractor beam, um, in the original rules, it's a separate module, but later on they decided that it would just be a little something that you could hold in the cargo bay. But it also had a price on it, so I, I, I decided that, you know, these things can't come with the cargo bay, but I decided they'd have to buy this. So everyone had to put in money to do that, except for Melky because he wasn't part of that decision. Runt didn't have enough, so Ka, Ka as in Cat, um, offered to give her some money, uh, but she was going to charge interest. And then Pegasus stepped in and said she would just give her a, an interest-free loan as long as she paid it back at the end of this next mission, assuming they get some money. Uh, so that's what's going on now. Uh, we have special intelligence. That was, that was what the um, UREC granted us. As since we we captured that ship last mission, um, that gives us a little bit of time to get ready before they jump in. So that's nice. I can't imagine this is going to be too hard though. They're they're uh, th rank three these two, but they only have two guys. I don't know. Check back in with how the mission is going. Uh, like I somewhat predicted, it's been a fairly thorough flogging so far. Um, which is not necessarily a good thing. Ultimately, what we would like to do is capture the ship and also the diplomat. That would be the best outcome for us. However, um, one of our first cannon shots that hit it took out the life support, which also hurt the diplomat, which is there. Um, she is getting hurt for 1d6 damage every round, which, you know, right now she's at negative two. If there's negative four more, she's dead. And I guess essentially the mission is over. I don't. I don't know that these these two are interested in continuing the fight at that point. But what I wonder, and what I'm not clear on, is whether or not our people would know that she would be dead. Do they know what's going on inside the ship? I think since it's a board game, um, they would. But then it's also kind of a role-playing game, which maybe they wouldn't. But I think it would be very difficult for a game master to hide all of this. I haven't decided how I would want to play. I think it's designed so that you, you can see the other player's board. But then you can also chart all that on a piece of paper, so maybe not. I think it's it, maybe it's up to the Game Master themselves. Ooh, so we had an intense round of repairs. Several, several phases of um, the two humans on the ship here, the, the ambassador ship, trying to repair uh, different different uh, modules that are damaged. We still have several that are. The missile bay, both engines, all, all engines, and the life support was damaged. They finally got them fixed. This um, ambassador here is down to one life, so it's about done. Um, but just recently, Merker, which is Milky's name, I believe, um, and Capazoid have arrived on uh, arrived here, and there's going to be a showdown, it looks like. Here's the um, here's the opponent's marine. Remember, it's actually human. It's not one of those Zocalons or whatever they're called. I have a really hard time remem remembering this race's name. I keep thinking Tentac. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. It's the first time there's actually been any potential interpersonal conflict. In the last last one, there were you know we were on the ship with the enemy, but then the the scenario ended. 
All right, so now I have an interesting choice to make, and so we're going to use our real people cards to help us. Um, we have to decide what this guy is going to do. Presumably he's here to bring this ambassador to this planet. We don't quite know why. That's part of the reason the players are on this mission. They got this this um, intelligence saying that this ambassador was going on an unproclaimed uh, trip to this planet, which supposedly a problem, so we either need to kill the ambassador, in which case it would wake up in a clone tank and could maybe be interrogated, or capture the ambassador. Um, capturing is preferable because there could be information the ambassador had since the last time it was uh, cloned or recorded, had its DNA recorded. So there's two people on the ship protecting the ambassador, but they, you know, how how loyal they are and what is their motivation. Uh, in order to figure that out, we're going to go to our real people. And um, what I have them in piles in, of the kind of leg they're in, and we're also going to include our our current um, our current semifinalists, I guess. Yeah, semifinalists. Um, right. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Five, six will re-roll. Here we go. Six will re-roll. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So we got to do one of those. I'm going to draw them randomly. I should have actually included those in the, the loser's bracket as being number six. I think next time I do that, I will do that. I apologize. So really, since I rolled a six, I mean, if I had to clear that ahead of time, should have been someone who had already been eliminated from the tournament, which would have been nice, because then they would have had a chance to show themselves again. So they will be occurring, uh, coming back in outdoor survival. So I'm not going to look. Here we go. It looks like it's Sparky. Um, he's from the Vented Leg of Android. Sparky is an entrepreneur. Sparky's name is Sparky. His secret fantasy is an underwater tour of Truck Lagoon, or the Great Barrier Reef. An unusual fact about Sparky is he played the killer in Agatha Christie's play, The Mousetrap. His pet peeve, like so many others, involves drivers. His is slow drivers. He'd like to meet Jacques Cousteau. His personal motto is, have fun always. He's most proud of his underwater photography. His reputation in high school is lady killer. I think the ambassador is a lady. He's eclectic, adventurous, and gregarious. I think he's going to go for it. I don't think he's the type to really run away. Uh, you know, he's playing a game, too. And so Sparky impetuously moves over here, and he's going to take a shot. But before he can, um, Miracle, the, the, the character of Melky here, he was on Overwatch waiting for Sparky to come. Now, Sparky might have done the same thing if it weren't for the ambassador being right there. Uh, he would like to protect the ambassador. Uh, from these interlopers. So he rushed around hoping he'll be able to not get hurt. So Merker is going to get a shot. His combat is three and Sparky's target number is eight. So he's got to get an eight or better, which shouldn't be too hard. He gets one reroll because he is a marine. And he's going to luck that because this is pretty important. So he's going to use a point of luck. He's looking for a four or better here. That's a seven. He's going to look that again. So that's two lucks. You see a little bit of action here. This must be really exciting for you. There we go. So that he spent two lucks, but he gets to hit. Um, Sparky does have uh, armor on, so that's going to matter. Right, the damage is going to be 2d6 minus 3. Minus 2 because it's a blast pistol, and minus 1 because of Sparky's armor. I have to say, you know, although Sparky is a higher rank, this is not really a fair fight. Um, the player characters have a number of advantages in this game. So that's going to be four damages to Sparky. That's not enough to take him out, so he's going to be able to shoot back. We'll see how that goes. He hurt Merker, no problem, or hit him anyway. Merker has a carapace, though, because Merker is an insect, as you can see, or an insect-type uh, creature. Interesting uh, fact about the insect type. I think they're zoophiles or something. I, another one. I, I should I should learn these alien names. Um, but they're the only one that's that's kind of recognizable um, in the the traditional anthropomorphic sense. Um, you know, there's a like if you look at Kaz and Cat. Kaz and Cat is a, a pile of rocks, and then the traditional uh, whatever those are is this thing, and then. 
the tentacles are a bunch of tentacles. I, they did a nice job of making the aliens very alien, with the exception of these kind of bug people. Though it makes sense that there would be bug people. Alright, so damage 2d6 minus 3. Minus one because the um, Sparky is using a rifle, which is stronger than a pistol. Um, minus two because of the carapace. So that's that's a six damage. Um, I don't I don't know if you can luck that or not. I'm going to just say no. And so Merker is still standing, but he's he's getting down there. Merker just had a really bad shot. Um, he hit he hit Sparky all right, but it didn't do very much damage. So now Cat is in Cat. One, two, three, four, five. See, she can go one, two. She's gonna get in front of him and just kind of protect him that way. Um, she doesn't have another action to use, so she's just gonna sit there and take a shot. Okay, I did some read. It turns out you can use luck against damage. I'm gonna still stick with what I've done so far. I don't want to go back in time. Um, and and Melky is actually okay with that. He's he's not. I mean, he wants to compete, but he's not so concerned about the rules that he wants to cause me a lot of problems and heartache. Um, so right now Sparky is taking a shot. He's shooting past Kaz and Cat, trying to take Merker down. Merker is down to one life, and he knows that. Uh, but he needs a 10 to, to hit him because of um, Kaz and Cat. However, since he's so good, he only needs a 5. 5 or better. And that's definitely bigger than 5. So now he's going to do 2d6 minus 3. Um, you can bet Melky's going to be using his luck on this roll. Actually, he might not have to too much. Wow, shoot. Sorry, I had to check to see how much luck Merker had left. He only has two points, so he's going to get two shots at this. He needs to get a two or a one, or he is down for the count. That's a three again. That's not a two or a one. Let's see, he's going to try again. Oh, he's down for the double count, and he's out of luck. Um, he's not dead. He's at minus two. And Cad just took Sparky down. I think... Actually, I'm going to draw another card to see if the pilot is going to surrender. Uh, he's, he's in impossible odds for him to escape unless he gives himself up or herself up. We'll see who it is. So I don't have to move things. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Three. One, two, three. So it's either going to be Roadrunner or the Blue Baby Lefty. Tell you what, it's not really going to matter. Either one of these two would probably surrender at this point. Eh, Roadrunner might not. Um, yeah, I don't know that she would. So we're going to count that as another overwhelming success. They managed to capture both the dip diplomat, the ship, um, and both of the both of the the crew of the ship, I have to wonder if maybe I I wasn't reading something wrong in towards in terms of the scenario. It didn't seem very difficult, um, but maybe these guys are just that good. I don't know.